Good morning and welcome to Frank's School. I've got four cats on the table between me and the camera, so I'm probably going to be shooing cats. I don't know. Anyway, this is the seventh year of the 19th of Frank's School, the 19th day, the first video. Uh, and, and what I want to do here is I want to do a follow-up on what the, the video I did yesterday, which was so awkwardly done, and I apologize about the camera, the incomplete shot. But, you know, the, what's critical is to get the ideas questions even out to you. So it's a follow-up on, um, on soil holding on living roofs. And I, I had these pallets in here to try to visualize it. Now, uh, if uh, I added a co in the comment, I didn't have it immediately there, but I then added a link to this video, the six year, 176 day, ninth video, it, where I'm filming from a rooftop looking down at, at some pallet fencing and, uh, and an incomplete uh, folk hut. It's, it's, a, it's a summer kitchen. But anyway, it, if you'll go to that, click on that link, you, you'll see very much more clearly what I'm, uh, what, what I'm putting the living rooms on. I had the question posed to me, why so steep? And, and I, I don't want to address that, I don't think, right now. Uh, I suppose I could. Another thing, there will be drawings eventually available. I'm writing a book. Matter of fact, it's mostly written, called uh, "Building P Building Folk Huts with with Pallets: A New uh, Vernacular Architecture," and it, it's going to be like a textbook in a way. It's going to be full of drawings. Well, those drawings, you'll get to see them before the book is out. I rather hope. Well, all right, I'm going to start erasing this stuff because it'll be a little easier for me. Uh, uh, nails rust. Ultimately, you know, these pallets are held together with nails, and ultimately those nails will rust, especially if they're in soil. And so, you know, for it to be fairly permanent, I, I, you can't count on those nails. Now, if they were stainless steel nails or something like that, maybe, but they last a very long time, however, and certainly long enough to get established on that route, an ecosystem that will stay there of its own. Uh, I, I used, I didn't come up with the right word repose. Uh, the, the slope at which uh, sand, for example, slides, the engineering term for that is the angle of repose. And uh, I, I just thrown that in to say that that was the right word for it. Now ultimately, what I want, uh, oh, and I should have written this down. I'm, I was, <laughs> I'm dealing at the moment with the interpallet uh, space, the interpallet space. There's a layer of pallets that are right side up, and there's the impermeable layer, and then there's a layer of pallets that are upside down, and you could say that the stringers act like, I said, I said on the underside they act like uh, uh, bridging. On the upper side they act sort of like purlins, if you know your carpentry. Well. Uh, so there's the impermeable layer. Now that layer, it could be various layers, I suppose. It doesn't have to be just one, but you gotta have one, I think, that you can count on it. And that's why I was using that example of, uh, of uh, bunker, uh, bunker cover. Uh, I, I worry about having more than one layer that's impermeable, because in between those layers, there will, if their water gets in there, it's gonna tend to wanna stay there and it may, I don't, I don't know, I just think it might be an invitation for mold, which you might not want. I don't know. But it could be done with layers. But let's say going beyond the impermeable layer, uh, a tarp, if it didn't, uh, you know, a tarp would last for quite a long time. What else could you put on there? Well, cloth, yeah. See, that material, that bale net, yesterday, I, I put it in a bag because I regard it as dangerous. And, you know, I had one of my baby goats got his, was trying to get some of the hay out of it that was tangled in there. And I saw him running across the table with the bag behind him. And sure enough, some little f bit of it had caught on his ear or I don't know what. And he was taking the bag along with him. That's what I'm talking about. That, that stuff is just an invitation to snag. Uh, creatures. I, I worry about it, uh, but I'm, I'll have something to say here. Anyway, burlap. Uh, I have burlap around, and uh, you know, another thing I, I really need to point out is, yeah, I'm not talking about going out and buying the best material available. Figure out just what you need and go buy it. No. Bottom feeding 
is critical to this whole thing. I mean, if that nasty material, yesterday I was saying, you know, probably it just should be burnt immediately to, 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 and, and that's not really decommissioning, but to neutralize its danger. I, I'm, I'm really not too sure about that, even though I believe it would be a very effective matrix, if you will, for roots to spread out through. I don't know, you know, just not sure on that. Um, all right. So, uh, what else? Decommissioning. Yeah, the, the, the pallet ruse will serve to decommission. So will the faux cuts, and, and that's a bit of another subject, I guess. I didn't mention insulation. Well, insulation, actually, I don't know if I want it, because I want the soil to be, stay, to be kept somewhat warm. Um, you know, warmth that would come out of of the uh, a pallet hut, for example, would, would be good to keep that soil somewhat warm. Another thing I didn't mention is on top of everything can go a layer of clear plastic or translucent plastic. On, on I, it, I can't really show you the whole thing, but I, it was an opportunity to mention it. There'll be a very low fence around these roofs, and on that very low fence, about eight inches high maybe, uh, you could slide, uh, uh, I'm not sure, I don't know what to go, rails, or no, they, they would be like stretchers, to slide on and off uh, a, a transparent plastic if you want to use that. And in effect, the roof becomes a cold frame, one big cold frame as, as you want to use it. Instead of hinging, you usually think of a cold frame as hinge, a hinged window that you raise and work on and then put it back down. Well, standing in the hatch in the middle of the whole roof, which is where the gardening is mostly done, you can slide that away or bring it back at will. Uh, I, I don't really have time to tell all this stuff. Matter of roots. Uh, you know, a saw, there, there's a term called uh, getting a field sod bound. Uh, I think uh, brome grass tends to do that if it's not plowed. Well, sod bound would probably be fine uh, on a roof if it would, if you had a sod, and of course you, you, would, you wouldn't disrupt it if you had it. Vines, you know, they could do what the wires would do, ultimately, to hold it if they would grow that way. But would they go over the top? Uh, still another cat. Would they go over the top to make the whole thing uh, draped there. I don't know, but then I was thinking maybe you could take a vine and plant it on top. Vines like to climb, but if they had no option to climb, I suppose they would then go down both sides. I don't know. Chickens would get up there. What if the chicken, what if my chickens get up there and start scratching and digging in that? Well, they'd scratch through the impermeable uh, membrane uh, or layer. <laughs> of course, they'd run into that uh, uh, bale net if I have it there. But, you know, thinking about that, I'm, 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 this is almost random. I'm just throwing out thoughts because I'm looking for input. Now, I will come to the growing medium itself. Once you've got that, once you've put the pallet upside down on top of this stuff, you could say that inter-pallet space is now complete. And now you start the growing medium. What should be put there for, for things to actually grow in? Uh, that'll have to be a completely different subject, and, and there are many people out there that know a lot more than I do about that. And then what species to plant? You know, just this morning before I came down here, I saw on the news about this worry about the insect population of the planet collapsing. Well, you know, it's been taken so long for people to wake up to what was going on. But in any case, I suppose living roofs could have a really important role to play. In, in encouraging those those insects, depending on the species that were put there. And, and in a way, just covering up the dead zone that the roofs are. All right, bye for now.